Conservatory of Porto, and so I would like to talk to you um, how Leo Brauer went to Portugal, um, his presence is all, uh, along the, the years, and also his influence in Portugal. So, started to uh, play guitar very uh, young and uh, soon he became a very talented uh, guitarist and he started to tour all around uh, all the most important guitar festivals all over the places, all over the world. Um, and that's why it of course, he would uh, arrive to the Festival de Musica de Córdoba, founded in 1981 by Paco Peña, the flamenco guitarist. And so, uh, he was so important, of course, he, was, he, would like, he would have to be invited to go to that festival. But he was invited to found and direct the orchestra Classica de Córdoba, Sinfónica. And here uh, we can see in 1992, here we can see La Brauer in one of his recordings with lots of first recordings, uh, La Brauer directing the Orchestra de Córdoba. Come back. Uh, Córdoba, as you know, is close to Portugal, and of course, in this festival, the, it's very easy if he lives in Cuba, if he lives in the United States, it's very difficult to call him back to Portugal. But if he lives in Cordoba, it's easier for uh, the, uh, the organization to call the Leo Brower to come to Portugal. So that's why. Uh, in 1994, uh, Lito Godinho and Oscar Fletcher um, called Leo Brauer to be in the Santo Tiso first guitar festival. Here we can see Oscar Fletcher and Lito Godinho, and in the middle, Leo Brauer and Eduardo Isaac. Uh, they played the Concierto Elegiaco and Concierto de Aranjuez. Leo Brauer conducting and Eduard Isaac playing. Here we can see uh, Leo Brauer at the end of the concert watching uh, Eduard Isaac playing Paisaje Cubano con Campanas, an encore, uh, a piece, after the Concierto de Aranjuez. This is an image from the first festival international de guitarra de Santo Tirso, Festival Internacional de Guitarra de Santo Tirso. Um, in the next year, 
the second fest festival international de guitarra de Santo Tirso, the second festival. Uh, we can see also Leo Brower who came once again, surrounded by Oscar Fletcher, Eduardo Isaac, and uh, the rising star, the classical Japanese classical guitarist Kazuhito Yamashita. Uh, phenomenon. And we can see Leo Brower, like you, will be tomorrow with the t-shirt with the, the Festival de Guitarra de Santo Tirso <laughs> here. Just like the, the same nice picture. And in this second year, he didn't uh, conduct it, the orchestra, but he, went, he came for a master class, guitar master class. And uh, lots of young, eager students, Portuguese students, uh, wanted to be part of this uh, important event. Um, they, uh, they wanted to learn more with Leo Brauer. We can see two videos here. The first one, Leo Brower giving a uh, master class. I don't know if you know the, the, the guitarist here. Can we put the image?
He corrects the guitar. <laughs> very rare images from the, this masterclass. Well, um, so I will continue my presentation. Uh, and um, yes, in, in, he came back to Portugal two years after, in uh, 1997. Uh, Leo Brauer, he met Yamashita before, in two years uh, before, and he premiered this night. Um, he, he, Yamashita played four guitar concertos in one night. Uh, as you can see there, we have uh, we have Keiko Fuji con concerto numero uno, Castelnuovo Tedesco. Concerto in Re Maggiore, Yoshimatsu Pegasus Effect, a premiere, and Concerto della Fues in one night. <laughs> uh, as you can imagine, uh, uh, it, it was incredible to, to watch the, that happen. Uh, and as I, I wrote in my chapter, Time stood still for some minutes with immense applause that followed the Rodrigo's last note. Yamashita displayed an incredible amount of virtuosity, sensitiveness, and incredible rare performance skills, all under the extraordinary baton of Leo Brauer. Um, what happened after Santo Tirso, after these three festivals? We, we don't know, maybe we'll never know, but uh, Oscar Fletcher and Rito Godinho, they never, uh, they, they separate, they went different ways. Uh, maybe something very personal happened before, uh, between them, and they got, uh, mm, they went for different ways, and some, uh, one organized one thing, and the other uh, organized other uh, festivals and projects. So, the Santa Tirso festival was not, was, would never be the same. But, um, Lito Godinho, uh, Oscar Fletcher continued the, the Santa Tirso festival, which still exists, uh, not every year, but still exists. And, um, for instance, in, in 1998, I just heard uh, Yesterday, that uh, Leo Brau went to Faf to do a, a master class, which is a small town there, and João Machado told me I was there uh, mm -hmm. learning a master class with Leo Brauer. So, um, and then in 2001, uh, Lito Godinho, the other um, teacher, uh, he founded the Festival Internacional de Guitarra de Trofa which was very, very close to Santo Tirso. It was like a rival, a rave rivalry between the, between the two towns. And we founded the first festival, the guitar in the year 2000, and this is the 2001, the second festival. As you can see, it's an incredible amount of important guitarists here. You have David Russell, Margarita Scarpa, all of that playing the lute. Um, Carlo Domenicoli, Eduardo Isaac, Costa Scozzionis, Serranito, Dua Sad and Suarez Paz. Uh, Suarez Paz was the violin from the Quintito Nuevo Tango de Astor Piazzolla, which is an incredible uh, display of uh, incredible musicians in the same year, in the same festival. And uh, 
it was a, a concert a homage to uh, Leo Blauer. They played at night the Concerto de Volos and the, the, con the double concerto for violin and guitar. And then, uh, as you can see, there was an incredible uh, many years have passed since Santa Thieves and Trofa, and uh, Leo Brower came back in 2018. Most of us thought he would never come back to Portugal. He was very, uh, very old, age, uh, some problems with his health, and we would never. Uh, we thought we would never see him again. But uh, Rui Gama, the guitar teacher at the Music Conservatory of Braga, as well as a founder and artistic director of the Orchestra de Cordas de Viadas do Minho, which means the Blood Strings Orchestra, um, he organized a workshop the second workshop in Braga in the year 2018, and it was, and he invited Leo Brower to come to uh, conduct, to direct the, the workshop. And here we can see Leo Brower, not as young as before, but And here we can see again uh, Augusto Pacheco, who was uh, playing uh, uh, vice before, very young. And then we have here him playing solo with Leo Brauer. It's an incredible uh, amount of students, young students, not very young students. <laughs> and here they play the the, uh, the um, Paisaje Cubano con Rumba for big, big guitar ensembles. Paisaje Cubano con Rumba, Concerto Grosso, um, a very uh, a piece he has just uh, composed the year before, and the Concerto de Tricastin for two solo uh, guitar players. Who's the first guitar? Yeah, the first guitar we will see, the, the concert master, right? Yes. Ricardo Cerqueira. Ah, why did you say it?
here you can see some, some images of the rehearsal. And some images from the concert. Here you have Paulo Pérez also. And the final moments of the concert. Uh, Thank you. 
I ask the permission to say that. <laughs> so uh, it is impossible to quantify how much music is being played in Portugal. Uh, but we see here the Pedro Rodrigues, a young guitarist, playing the music of Leo Brower in uh, the Carnegie Hall in New York in 2004. Also, Francisco Bereni, our colleague in the Conservatorio, who has just uh, edited his, his, uh, his uh, CD. Uh, as you can see, we, he recorded Leo Brower, La Gran Sarabanda, also. Uh, and the edition Paul Pérez has just brought you, this is uh, Estudos Evocativos from Ricardo Abreu, who is dedicated to Leo Brauer, uh, Tributo a Leo Brauer. The Ricardo Abreu is the same the guy who uh, filmed the master class in the 1994, he's the same one. Um, here we have another colleague, Portuguese colleague, playing the, the Last time the music of Leo Brauer was played here in Portugal, uh, Concerto Quasi Grosso, a uh, very uh, young uh, work for mandolin, guitar, and plectrum orchestra. It was, it was played by the by Vincent Pierre de Mandé, uh, uh, mandolin virtuoso, a French uh, mandolin virtuoso, uh, the dignity of the work, and Pedro Rodrigues, the, the guy from the Carnegie Hall and which is in the that big guitar orchestra he is playing next to Ricardo Cerqueira uh, and the Orquestra Portuguesa de Guitarras e Bandolins where I play also uh, here in Gondomar in Oporto um, Thank you. 
guitar guitarists who play the music of Leo Brower. I've, I've just picked a few, uh, but there are plenty of uh, important Portuguese guitarists who played his music, sonatas, the Camero Negro, uh, recorded uh, Antonio Jorge Gonçalves from Lisbon, uh, the Paulo Pérez wife, Paulo Marcos, who played also the, the Camero Negro, uh, Jose Pina, Jose Pina from Porto, Paulo Vaz de Carvalho, all of that is uh, uh, quite explained in my chapter. I just picked a few. So, and this is the, this was the presence of Leo Brauer in Portugal. Uh, goes far beyond these six physical appearances in the years of 1984, 95, 97, 98, 2001 and 2018. Leo Brauer was not only a major influence on the young generations, but he continues to inspire the younger generations today. So, uh, thank you for listening to me and uh, an applause to, not to me, but to Leo Brauer.